So hello everyone. My name is Mr. Bansal hai, and I am from Chandigarh. I gave my NEET in 2020 and I secured a rank of 484 with a marks of 683. So today we will be doing about uh, the chapter evolution in which we will talk about the important points from the NCERT. और साथ में एनसीआरटी बैक एक्सरसाइजेस भी सॉल्व करेंगे तो जो चैप्टर ऑफ एवोल्यूशन इट बेसिकली टेल्स अबाउट फ्रॉम हाउ दी लाइफ इवॉल्व फ्रॉम अ सिंगल इनऑर्गेनिक एटम्स एंड मॉलिक्यूल्स टू अ कॉम्प्लेक्स बायो मॉलिक्यूल्स फर्दर्ड बाय टेशो एंड एन ऑर्गेनिज्म और पहले कैसे प्रिमेटिव ऑर्गेनिज्म होते थे प्रोकैरियोट से लेकिन पूरा यूकैरियोट तक पूरा ह्यूमन लाइफ डेवलप हुई सो फॉर दिस जब अगर इसको नीट पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू से देखें तो इसके अंदर काफी इंपॉर्टेंट चीजें आ जाती है एंड दिस इज अ काफी वास्ट एंड एक्सटेंसिव चैप्टर बट इफ यू फोकस ओनली एंड ओनली ऑन एन पी आर वो काफी ईजी हो जाता है सो so फर्स्ट इसमें कुछ साइंटिस्ट uh, के नाम है जो इम्पोर्टेंट है आई राइट इट डाउन ऑन दी पी डी एफ एक्सल तो साथ में आप देखो आप लोगों को स्क्रीन के थ्रू दिखता भी जाएगा सो so पहले uh, सबसे पहले बात करते हैं फर्स्ट साइंटिस्ट दैट इज हर्बर्ट स्पेंसर हर्बर्ट स्पेंसर ही टर्म एवोल्यूशन एंड सेकेंड इज डार्विन डार्विन ने हमें दिया था जो बुक में भी चैप्टर के विदिन भी दिया है डार्विन गेव द बुक ओरिजिन ऑफ स्पीशीज बाय मीन ऑफ नेचुरल सिलेक्शन स्पीशीज बाय मीन ऑफ नेचुरल सिलेक्शन एंड देन वी हैव ओपेर ओपेरन Oparin, he gave the book Origin of Life. Now, further going into the chapter, starting here, starting with just a brief introduction about the chapter, what is evolution and what is the study of evolution on Earth called and all. So, after that, after that, Origin of Life. Origin of Life. Me, here, there are some very good terms and data given that I should remember. First of all, I should remember that it is almost almost twenty billion years old. The universe. This is the data that is given. and then secondly we'll go to big bang theory fir aata hai big bang theory ka jo big bang theory hai wo origin of universe ko explain karti hai then we go to the next data that is earth earth is around 4.5 billion billion years pehle bani thi fir uske baad aata hai yahan pe kuch molecules jis jo already earth pe present the aur jo sabse pehle bane the jisme aata hai ki water vapor methane carbon dioxide and ammonia these are very commonly asked in the entrance exam ki initially kon kon se molecules present the then comes life kab appear hui life appear hui aapki uh, 500 million years back uh, no 500 million years after the formation of earth now there are uh, a few scientists who gave their theory ki earth ki evolution kaise kaise earth pe evolution kaise kaise hui and how did life came into existence so first of them there is uh, pan smernia which was given by greek early greek thinkers jo batate the ki spores uh, life came into units of life called spores the jiske through life bani and it, for a long time it was believed ki life came out of uh, decaying rotten matter like straw and mud so this was the theory what was this theory called it was called the theory of spontaneous generation then after that came uh, louis pasteur louis pasteur he gave his own theory he demonstrated that life can only come from pre existing life so there are a few th- th- theories first was by the early greek thinkers second was by the by louis pasteur life can come only from a pre existing life there was no spontaneous generation of life so the spontaneous generation of life theory was dismissed then came Uh, this is very commonly asked. Then came a pairing of Russian and Helden of England, and then they gave that suppose that the first form of life could have been from pre-existing non-living organic molecules, that is RNA and protein. This is also very commonly asked in the organic uh, in the entrance examinations. So the most important line here is this: the conditions on Earth were high temperature. volcanic storms reducing atmosphere and the uh, methane ammonia so here in uh, in the nda mock test they asked about they asked about the specific word here reducing it is not oxidizing or any other uh, word here it should be reducing and the molecules are methane and ammonia next comes the name of S, uh, in 1953 sl miller an american scientist 
who created similar conditions in laboratory and he showcased how uh, life can be generated from inorganic molecules or the uh, just from directly from the molecules so that is he created an electric discharge and here now again important what is here is the molecules methane hydrogen ammonia water vapor at 1800 degrees celsius so what did he observe what was formed formation of ammonia uh, amino acids and similarly he asked in other similar experiments other people observed that there was formation of sugar nitrogen bases pigments and fats so this is all about the theories and now first and this is the diagram which depicts the miller's experiment so this is also very important here very various labeling questions are asked here aata hai tumhara ye ki life non cellular life ka origin hai first non cellular form of life was origin 300 million uh, 3 million billion years back aur ye kya kya ho sakta tha this could be uh, giant molecules like rna protein and polysaccharides now uh, one more thing to add here the theory of uh, operon and heldon is called the theory of is called the modern theory it is the first uh, it told that the first life originated in sea so water is essential for origin of life and secondly heldon called these as dilute soup or prebiotic soup and also in various previous year examinations this is asked as i previously mentioned in the molecules here pyk now comes the the now see way at various places the lines of ncert are very important so in one of the previous year that is ai pmt 2007 here a specific word was asked or in this line that these molecules or these capsules were reproduced so like first life first non cellular form of life origin 300 uh, 3 billion years back these were giant molecules like rna so these were probably single cells and then is all the life forms were in the water environment only as i mentioned before water is very essential for uh, evolution now this was the version of biogenesis what is important here this was the version of biogenesis now comes the evolution of life form the theory so here various other theories are given one of these was theory of special creation this is one of the theories which was suspended later and no one believed it because many absurd things were uh, told in this theory but you need to remember this for the mcq okay so i'll uh, say the part again so this is the diagram which uh, which shows the representation of the miller's experiment so this can also be asked in various mcq according as per the labeling so labeling can can be asked out of which the most important part is the molecules are and then after the see the first theory was early greek thinkers then there was by Louis, the theory was dis, uh, discarded by louis pasteur followed there was third by operon of uh, operon of russia and heldon of england and this was proved by an experiment uh, this theory was proved by miller in his experiment that is produced and this has been asked in the pyq previous year questions in 2007 so this you need to focus on pyq then after that the first cellular form of life originated 2000 million years back which was probably single cell with uh, single cells and these all these life forms were originated only in water so water is very very essential for evolution abhi jo ye sare evolution ki series hai is pure version ko bolte hai biogenesis ki jo first uh, first form of life er, arose slowly through evolutionary forces from non living molecules उसके बाद आता है कुछ और थ्यूरीज जो लोगों ने दी थी जिसमें से एक आती है थ्यूरी ऑफ स्पेशल क्रिएशन दीज हैज थ्री कोनिटेशन बट दिस वॉज डिस्कार्ड बिकॉज ऑफ इट्स एब्सर्ड कोनिटेशन फर्स्ट दैट ऑल दी ऑर्गेनिजम टूडे वी सी आर क्रिएटेड एसेटली नो देर एवोल्यूशन हैज टुक प्लेस हम पहले एब्स थे और एब्स के बाद ह्यूमन डेवलप हुए ह्यूम इवॉल्व हुए सो देर वो जो ऑर्गेनिजम्स आज डेट में प्रेजेंट है दे वर नॉट क्रिएटेड आज सच नाउ सेकेंड इज की जो डाइवर्सिटी है वो ऑलवेज सिंस सेम थी डाइवर्सिटी कभी भी सेम नहीं है हमेशा न्यू स्पीशीज क्रिएट होती है एंड दे 
न्यू स्पीशीज इवॉल्व होती है नॉट क्रिएटेड दे आर इवॉल्व एंड दे एक्सटेंड ऑल्सो एंड ऑल्सो अर्थ इज ओनली फोर थाउजेंड ईयर्स ओल्ड विच इज ऑल्सो वेरी रॉन्ग अर्थ इतनी बहुत इससे ज्यादा बहुत पुरानी है अकॉर्डिंग टू दी गिवन इन दी फर्स्ट ईयर ऑफ दी एंड एंड ऑल्सो हेयर यू नीड टू लर्न द नेम ऑफ दिस शिप शिप कॉल्ड एम एस एस बीगल इसमें क्या था कि चार्ल्स डार्विन ने बहुत सारे थ्यूरीज डेवलप की थी एक आइलैंड पे जाके तो वो कौन से शिप में गए थे सी वॉयज में द शिप वॉज एम एच एस बीगल दे आज दिफॉल्टेंस इन दी एम सी नाउ हेयर वॉट लाइन इज इम्पोर्टेंट इज एनी पॉपुलेशन हैज बिल्ट इन वेरिएशन इन कैरेक्टर्स this line can be asked as it is in the exam in the mcqs now he gave about uh, a few ideas and theories which was fitness of the individual or the population and ultimately only ultimately and only to reproduce fitness ki it is the uh, survival of the fittest so he called it nat what did darwin call it darwin called it natural selection and then came the scientist alfred wallace he was a naturalist he was a naturalist he worked in malay archipelago and he came to a similar conclusion so all the existing life forms share similarity and uh, have common ancestors this was the most important thing they told about now what are the evidences for evolution evidences for evolution there are fossils fossils now here if you are uh, ever asked about the definition of the fossil that is given here fossils are the remains of hard parts of the life forms found in rocks now there are different the different aged rock like uh, sediments jisme different life forms honge aur particular sediments hote hain Now there is embryological support for evolution. Embryologically, कैसे होती? और जो fossils वाले uh, evidence को बोलते हैं, these are it is given the name paleontological evidences. जो uh, embryological evidences थे, वो दिए थे Ernst Haeckel ने. This is also asked commonly in the MPQs. So first evidence was paleontological. Second was embryological. And but however this proposal was disapproved by this was disapproved by karl ernst von weber jo ernst hickel hai usne kya bola tha ki jo embryos of all the vertebrates including humans develop a row of vestigial gill slits just behind the head but it is functioning only in fish and not found in any adult uh vertebrate now this was disapproved by karl ernst von weber so this is the third name we need to learn here now there are comparative anatomy and morphological morphology which shows similarity and differences among the organism in the ear so this is the diagram you need to learn isme bahut baar kaise hote hai ki puri jo ye figure hai pura paper mein aata hai aata hai and they ask about the labeling of the medial dinosaurs like triceratops dinosaurus or they will ask about archaeopteryx archaeopteryx is very very important evolutionary so do learn this now here we will talk about homo uh, divergent evolution and these structures are called homologous and there is convergent evolution which are called analogous so what is meant by divergent evolution divergent evolution means that इनिशियली जो स्ट्रक्चर या फिर जो एनिमल्स थे दे हैड सेम स्ट्रक्चर जैसे वहां पे लिखा है पहले सेम स्ट्रक्चर होता था बट डिफरेंट डायरेक्शन में उनकी एवोल्यूशन और डेवलपमेंट हुई क्योंकि डिफरेंट डायरेक्शन में क्योंकि अडाप्टेशन हुई डिफरेंट नीड के लिए तो ये क्या बताता है हमें कॉमन इंटरेस्ट बताता है फिर फॉर एग्जाम्पल जिसने एग्जाम्पल दिया है जैसे यहाँ जो बोबन वेलिया प्लांट है उसमें जो ऑर्जिक कोबिटेसी है बट बोवेन विलिया में थॉर्न डेवलप हुए और कुकर्बिटेसी में टेंड्रल्स डेवलप हुए ये दोनों क्या है होमोलोगस है इनका ओरिजिन सेम है स्ट्रक्चर सेम है बट इनका जो नीड है जो इनका वर्क है दैट इज डिफरेंट टेंड्रल्स तुम्हें क्लाइंबिंग में हेल्प करते हैं क्रीपिंग में हेल्प करते हैं थॉर्न हमारी प्रोटेक्शन के लिए होते हैं प्लांट्स को सो होमोलोगी इज बेस्ड ऑन 
so here is the statement homology is based on divergent evolution where it analogy refers to a situation uh, this is not fir aata hai convergent evolution now this is also example of homology here man cheeta whale and bat ye sab ke four limbs hai man ke four limbs jo hot uh, man ke jo four limbs hai wo वर्क के लिए यूज होते हैं जो चीता के फोर लिंग्स है वो रनिंग के लिए है व्हील के फोर लिंग्स स्विमिंग के लिए है एंड बैट के फोर लिंग्स आर फॉर फ्लाइट सो दिस इज आल्सो अ डाइवर्जेंट एवोल्यूशन नाउ कम है अबाउट द कन्वर्जेंट एवोल्यूशन फॉर एग्जांपल स्वीट पोटैटो व्हिच इज अ रूट मॉडिफिकेशन पोटैटो व्हिच इज अ स्टेम मॉडिफिकेशन दे बोथ आर फॉर स्टोरेज ऑफ फूड बट दीस आर डिफरेंट पार्ट्स लाइक स्वीट पोटैटो रूट है पोटैटो स्टेम है सो देयरफॉर इट इज एनालॉग Another example is flippers of penguins and dolphins. The penguins are the aves, hain, but the dolphins and these are mammals. But in their the flippers, ka hai, unka, the function hai, it is same. So that therefore it is convergent evolution or analogy. That is different structures, same function. Now what is here? These biochemical similarities point to the shared ancestry of structural similarities among diverse organisms. Now here again there are some there is some data given here which you need to learn here that in England in 1850s यहाँ पे भी moths की बात होगी before industrialization जो moths थे वो white wings होते थे but after in or uh, because the trees were also a bit lighter color but जैसे ही there were more uh, white wing moths but after industrialization there was collection of There were more dark wing moths because ऐसा क्यों हुआ अभी इसका रीजन है ये आफ्टर इंडस्ट्रियलाइजेशन है बिकॉज ऑफ दिस प्रोडक्शन इन द कार्बन एमेशन इंक्रीज हो गई थी जिसकी वजह से जो ट्री का बाग का जो कलर था वो डार्क हो गया था एंड बिकॉज ऑफ द डार्कनेस ऑफ द बाग जो डार्क कलर मॉथ था वो ज्यादा अच्छे से ब्लेंड हो पाता था ट्री की बाग के साथ एंड वो प्रिडेटर से उसको बचाने के लिए हेल्प करता था तो इट वॉज अ प्रोटेक्टिव मैकेजम फॉर दैम so what is here written in the text it is predators well spot a moth against the contrasting background so this all explains this theory now iska conclusion kya hai iska conclusion ye hai ki this shows that in a mixed population those that can adapt better and survive in an increased population they survive but no variant is completely wiped out you need to remember this अभी यहाँ पे जो ये वाली स्टेटमेंट्स है ये बहुत इम्पोर्टेंट है ये बहुत बार पूछी भी गई है यहाँ पे देख चुके हैं सिर्फ एक कलर चेंज के लिए भी बहुत ज्यादा टाइम लगा इट वॉज फ्रॉम एटीन फिफ्टी टू नाइनटीन ट्वेंटी सो इट इज नॉट इट इज नॉट डन इन डेज और वीक्स इट इज इट है एंड इसमें सेकेंड में क्या है एग्जाम्पल्स ऑफ एवोल्यूशन बाई एंथ्रोपोजेनिक एक्शन दीज ऑल्सो टेल्स अस दैट द एवोल्यूशन इज नॉट डायरेक्टेड प्रोसेस इन द सेंस ऑफ डिटर्मिनेशन कुछ सेंस ऑफ डिटर्मिनेशन नहीं है जो एनवायरमेंट में चेंजेस आते हैं उसके अकॉर्डिंगली एवोल्यूशन प्रोसेस होता है सो देर फॉर इट इज फॉलो स्टोकैस्टिक प्रोसेस बेस्ड ऑन दी चांसेस इवन इन द नेचर एंड द चेंज म्यूटेशन इन द चांस म्यूटेशन इन दर्गेनिज्म इसका मतलब क्या हुआ काफी लोग इसका मतलब नहीं समझ पाते सो so, इसको एक बार समझते हैं जो जो ये सारे एग्जांपल्स थे अभी तक वो क्या है एवोल्यूशन बाय एंथ्रोपोजेनिक एक्शन एंथ्रोपोजेनिक मतलब जो ह्यूमंस की वजह से एक्शन हुए ये एवोल्यूशन उसके रीजन की वजह से हुई है यहाँ पे ऊपर एवोल्यूशन क्यों हुआ था क्योंकि इंडस्ट्रियलाइजेशन हुई थी इंडस्ट्रियलाइजेशन किसने की थी ह्यूमन्स ने की थी इंडस्ट्रियलाइजेशन तो दैट इज एन एंथ्रोपोजेनिक एक्शन सो दिस इज एन एग्जाम्पल ऑफ एवोल्यूशन बाय एंथ्रोपोजेनिक एक्शन and also this evolution tells also this tells us that evolution is not a directed process evolution kya hai not a directed process koi sense of determination nahi hai to iska kya matlab hua jaise jo jo change in environment mein aayenge uske according change changes in mutation honge jo jo chance events honge uske according change in mutation in organism hoga now we come to adaptive radiation Adaptive radiation के लिए the most famous example is Darwin Pinscher. So who gave the adaptive radiation? It was by Darwin. So Charles Darwin था. He went to Galapagos Island. वहाँ पे उसने he made an amazing discovery of creatures. 
on his particular interest it was these were called darwin's hinges now there were a variety of hinges abhi isme bhi bahut sare questions puchte hain ki jo original hinges thi these were originated with uh, seed eating features and many other forms with altered beak arose abhi isme kya tha bhi kuch vegetarian hinges thi and be some became insectivorous originally kya thi seed eating thi but wahan pe अडेप्टिव रेडिएशन हुई मतलब बहुत सारे अलग अलग तरह की फेंसेज और डेवलप हुई कैसे कुछ इंसेक्टिव बने कुछ वेजिटेरियन फेंसेज बने दिस प्रोसेस ऑफ एवोल्यूशन ऑफ डिफरेंट स्पीशीज इन अ गिवन जियोग्राफिकल एरिया क्या है डिफरेंट स्पीशीज है मतलब गिवन जियोग्राफिकल एरिया स्टार्टिंग फ्रॉम अ पॉइंट एंड लिटरली रेडिएटिंग टू अदर एरियाज ऑफ जोग्राफी हैबिटेट इज कॉल्ड अडेप्टिव रेडिएशन so this is the definition of adaptive radiation so this is the first questions given in your bat exercise so the answer of the first question is uh, in the first question what is asked given example of adaptive radiation so the example of adaptive radiation is the example of darwin finches they originated as an original seed eating finches no sorry this is not the uh, first question this is the eighth question describe an example of adaptive radiation this is the answer of the eighth question so this is the example of adaptive radiation and this is here is the definition the process of evolution of different species in a given geographical area starting from a point and really, uh, and literally radiating outwards so another best uh, another example of the adaptive radiation is marsupial radiation so also one more thing darwin's finches represent one of the best examples of this phenomena another example is australian marsupials इसमें क्या था कि और जो ये वाले तुम्हारी डायग्राम है ये भी बहुत बार एग्जाम एग्जाम में आती है अबाउट लेबलिंग सो फ्रॉम मार्सुपिल रेडिएशन से वेरियस स्पीशीज और एनिमल्स डेवलप हुए जिसमें बैंडीकूट वॉम्बैट कैंगरू मार्सुपियल रेड बैंडेड एंड ईटर टाइगर कैट जस्ट मेडियन बुल शुगर ग्लाइडर एंड मार्सुपिल बुल और कोला डेवलप हुए और ये मार्सुपिव रेडिएशन के एग्जाम्पल कैसे है जो सारे चेंजेस हुए दीज ऑल अकर्ड विद इन दस्ट्रेलियन आईलैंड कॉन्टिनेंट सो कंडीशन क्या क्या थी इन अ गिवन जियोग्राफिकल एरिया सो दिस अकर्ड विद इन अस्ट्रेलियन आईलैंड सो इट इज विद इन गिवन जियोग्राफिकल एरिया और एक ऑर्गेनिज्म से या कुछ ऑर्गेनिज्म से आगे रेडिएट होकर मल्टीपल डेवलप हो गया सो एक सिंगल ऑस्ट्रेलियन मार्केटियल से वेरियस स्पीशीज डेवलप हुई ना दिस स्टेटमेंट इज इम्पोर्टेंट which is when more than one adaptive radiation appear to have occur in an isolated geographical area representing different habitats one can call this convergent evolution now let's decode it what does this mean first is when more than one adaptive radiation more than one adaptive radiation ek se zyada adaptive radiation ho raha hai kisme ek isolated geographical area mein तो उसको हम क्या बोल सकते हैं कन्वर्जेंट एवोल्यूशन इसमें क्या क्या हो सकता है रिप्रेजेंटेटिंग डिफरेंट हैबिटेट्स फॉर एग्जांपल सी दिस इज दी एग्जांपल ऑफ कन्वर्जेंट एवोल्यूशन अभी जो ये सारे इधर एनिमल्स हैं सारे ऑस्ट्रेलियन मार्सुपियल्स हैं दिस इज वन अडेप्टिव रेडिएशन एंड नाउ ये सारे सेंट्रल मैमल्स हैं जो दो डिफरेंट आइसोलेटिकल जोग्राफिकल एरियाज में हुए ये ऑस्ट्रेलिया में अडेप्टिव रेडिएशन हुई थी बट दिस टुक प्लेस आउटसाइड ऑफ ऑस्ट्रेलिया इन अदर लैंड लॉक कॉन्टिनेंट एट दैट टाइम तो बट ये दोनों सेम टाइम पे हुई तो व्हाट इज दी क्राइटेरिया है सेम टाइम से डिफरेंट मोर देन वन आई वुड से मोर देन वन अडेप्टिव रेडिएशन इन डिफरेंट Isolated geographical areas, areas. So, the same time to hold more than one adaptive radiation is, or different isolated geographical areas may hold. So we can say that two similar path lines develop, and on the basis of those similar type of organisms develop. Hold more marsupial mole, and later non-bat, which is the marsupial and later mouse, marsupial mouse, lemurs, spotted, uh, spotted buzzcock. Flying squirrels, flying phalanger, bob, bobcat, Tasmanian tiger wolf, wolf and Tasmanian wolf. 
this is also very commonly asked in your MCQ. So you need to learn this table as well. Now here I would like to add one more thing. Okay, so uh, here we were discussing about the examples of the adaptive radiation. First was the Darwin fences, next is Australian marsupials, then is the limbs of mammals. Uh, limbs of mammal, limbs of uh, giant turtle, and uh, such blood fish. These are the examples of adaptive radiation. Now we will continue to the next topic, that is 7.5, biological evolution. So the essence of Darwin theory about the evolution is natural selection. Essence of Darwin theory is natural selection. So here also one, in one of the important statements is the rate of appearance of new forms is linked to the life cycle or the lifespan. Abhi jaise jo microbes hai ya jo bacteria hai, they divide within minutes. Wo, they divide very fast. They have the ability to multiply and become millions of individuals within hours. So abhi yahan pe jo example hai, listen to this very carefully. Ye tumhare first question ka answer hai, jisme poocha gaya thai antibiotic resistance the question was explain the antibiotic resistance of the uh, observed in bacteria in light of Darwinian selection theory. So that is discussed here. That is a colony of bacteria, say, say A was growing in a given medium, has built in variations in terms of ability to utilize a feed component. And a change in medium composition was done. Koi, there was a colony of bacteria A, jo grow karvi thi then change in medium was done See, change in medium was done and only a part of population grew jisko humne bola b only a part of that population b can survive so in this new conditions in due course of this time variant population outgrows the other and appears as a new species abhi kya aata hai ki in due time of course abhi kya hoga ki jaise humne ye permanent changes karke rakhe medium mein to fir jo bacterial species iske andar nahi survive kar sakti in change of conditions mein they will not be able to grow in this medium only the bacteria which can grow and survive in this medium they will continue to reproduce so kuch time baad sirf wahi bacterial species bachengi which can survive in this medium to wahi continue hongi and they will replicate and form a new species so the same things happen in fish or fowl which would take millions of years uh, as the lifespan of the mammal was an age. So if same species kisi mammal ya kisi fish ke saath ho, kisi bhi eaves ke saath ho, it will take millions of years because their lifespan is an years. Here, ye itni jaldi within hours kyu ho gaya because unka jo lifespan hai wo bahut kam hoote hai around for E. coli it is 20 minutes. Now next is here are important lines here. Now this is that the fitness of B is better than A. So what did Darwin say? Evolution is based on natural selection. Now what is here? Nature selects for fitness. Now listen to these lines carefully. Nature selects for fitness. One must remember that the so-called fitness is based on the characteristics which are inherited. It is based on the characteristics which are inherited. Now, hence there must be a genetic basis for getting selected to evolve. Another way of saying this is that the same organisms are better adapted to survive in otherwise hostile environment. See, everything is quoted by the genes and the uh, genetic codes. So, kuch, and her organism ka vary karta hai. So, jo kuch organisms hai, they are better to adapt to survive in the hostile environment. Adaptive ability is inherited. So therefore they say that the adaptive ability is inherited. It has genetic basis. Fitness is the end result of the ability to adapt and get selected by nature. So kya hua? Fitness is the end result for the ability to adapt and get selected. Jo adapt kar paega, Jo, this species may say changes aate jayenge, wahi species aake jage select hogi by nature. Now, this is also an important line which is branching descent 
branching descent and natural selection are two key components of darwinian theory of evolution branching descent descent ke liye bola ki jaise darwin ne apne darwin finches ke through explain kiya ki ek finches एक डार्विनियन फिंच थे जो स्टार्टिंग में सिर्फ एक सीड ईटिंग फिंच थी या बर्ड थी उससे वेरियस टाइप ऑफ इन्फेक्टिव हो रहे थे हो रहे थे डेवलप हो तो दैट इज ब्रांचिंग डिसेंट एंड नेचुरल सिलेक्शन जो विच विल बी द मोस्ट विच हैज द एबिलिटी टू अडाप्ट दैट विल बी सिलेक्टेड बाई ए नेचर फॉर देयर फॉर नेचुरल सिलेक्शन ना अभी नेक्स्ट साइंटिस्ट का नाम इधर आता है इवन बिफोर डार्विन अ फ्रेंच नेचुरलिस्ट कॉल लेमार्क said that the evolution of forms has occurred but driven by the use and disuse of organs so what curie did lamar gave he gave use and disuse of organs you need to learn this it is lamar gave french naturalist use and disuse of organs he gave the example of giraffe yahan pe giraffe examples ke liye use hote and their elongation of neck he was ki जैसे वो छोटे पत्ते खत्म हुए द लीव वर ओनली लेफ्ट ऑन दी ग्रेटर हाइट एट दी और दी एट हायर हाइट ऑफ दी ट्री तो वहां तक पहुंचने के लिए इनोगेशन ऑफ नेक वॉज फास्ट फ्रॉम जनरेशन टू जनरेशन सक्सीडेड सक्सीडिंग जनरेशन एंड स्लोल दे एक्वायर्ड लॉन्ग नेक्स बट नो दी बिलीव बट नो वन बिलीव इन दिस एनी मोर सो ना दिस इज ऑल्सो एन इम्पॉर्टेंट लाइन is evolution a process or a result so here it is that when we describe the story of world we describe evolution as a process jab batayenge ki duniya kaise bani ya fir life kaise existed hai story of world ke time pe bolenge evolution as a process but when we dis- on the other hand when we describe the story of life on earth जब हम बोलेंगे एवोल्यूशन वी ट्रीट एवोल्यूशन एज अ कॉन्सिक्वेंस ऑफ प्रोसेस कॉल्ड नेचुरल सिलेक्शन एट दैट टाइम वी कॉल व्हेन वी डिस्क्राइब द स्टोरी ऑफ लाइफ ऑन अर्थ वी ट्रीट एवोल्यूशन एज अ कॉन्सिक्वेंस ऑफ प्रोसेस कॉल्ड नेचुरल सिलेक्शन स्टोरी ऑफ लाइफ के टाइम पे एवोल्यूशन है एक कॉन्सिक्वेंस है ऑफ प्रोसेस क्या होगा उस टाइम पे नेचुरल सिलेक्शन बट स्टिल दिस इज नॉट वेरी क्लियर But here you need to remember these lines as little as these are asked in the MCQs. Now, one more scientist come here. That is work of Thomas Malthus on population influence. That is now. Is my case is that he, who theoretically is theoretically population size will grow exponentially if everybody reproduces maximally. But the fact that the population size are only limited. so there has been competition for resources to jo log uh, un resources ke liye lad pate the jin jin species ko better adapt kar pati thi sirf wohi aage survive kar pati the wohi aage reproduce kar pati thi so this continued over many generations and there would have been a change in population characteristics and since new life forms appeared now means of evolution isme fir se kuch scientists se naam aate hain इसमें आएगा ह्यूगो डिवेरिस इन सेंचुरी ही वर्क्ड ऑन इवनिंग प्रिमरूस एंड ड्रॉट फॉर द आइडिया ऑफ म्यूटेशन आइडिया ऑफ म्यूटेशन तो व्हाट ही सेड दैट ही बिलीव दैट म्यूटेशन व्हिच कॉजेस एवोल्यूशन एंड नॉट द माइनर वेरिएशंस आर हेरिटेबल दैट डार्विन टॉक्ड अबाउट ही सेड दैट it is the mutation that causes evolution and not the minor variations that darwin said talked about isne kya bola ki mutation evolution karwata hai but darwin ne kya bola minor variation evolution karwate hain so if evolution for darwin was gradual evolution for darwin was gradual while for de veris he believed that it was saltation single step large mutation But studies in population genetics later brought out some clarity. Now, this के बाद क्या आएगा? Hardy Weinberg principle. ये सब अपनी अब तक scientists जितने भी थे वो सब अपनी various different theories दे रहे थे. कुछ कोई बोल रहा था natural selection है, कोई बोल रहा था survival of fittest है, कोई बोल रहा था molecules तो develop हो रहे हैं. फिर बाद में जब एक बार life in like molecules and cells बन गए, tissues बन गए, उसके बाद जो various develop evolution of various species है. तो कोई बोल रहा है 
कोई बोला था कोई म्यूटेशन कर रहा है तो वो सब चीजें जब पॉपुलेशन जेनेटिक स्टडी किया गया दैट बिकेम अ बिट क्लियर सो हु गेव दी पॉपुलेशन जेनेटिक्स इट वाज बाय द हार्डी वीनबर्ग प्रिंसिपल द हियर अ बिट थिंग व्हिच यू नीड टू रिमेंबर इज हार्डी वाज अ मैथमेटिशियन एंड वीनबर्ग वाज अ फिजिसिस्ट नो व्हाट दे सेड दैट the said that the frequency is supposed to remain fixed and even remain the same throughout generation so the frequency of occurrence of alleles of a gene they are rem- supposed to remain fixed even through the generation so for this they given a algebraic equations the principle what does the principle say the principle says that the allele frequency in a population are stable and is constant from generation to generation the gene pool that is the total gene and their alleles in a population remains constant this is called genetic equilibrium so sum total of all the allelic frequency is one principle ne kya bola ki allele frequency jo ek population mein hai it is stable and constant from generation to generation now gene pool what is gene pool gene pool is what the total number of the total genes and their alleles allele is a variation of gene so wo constant rehta hai that is the gene pool in a population remains constant and this is called genetic equilibrium when the gene pool is constant allelic frequencies are stable and constant it is called genetic equilibrium and sum of all the allelic frequencies is one so the individual frequencies for example can be taken as p and q in a diploid the frequencies of the allele of a and p this is suppose ek allele a hai aur ek allele small a hai to jo ek a allele ki the frequency hai wo p hogi aur jo small a allele ki frequency hai wo small wo q hoga to ab jab diploid mein jo gene uh, allele exist karti hai they exist in a diploid so the combinations can be either capital a capital a capital a small a and small a small a so capital a capital a ki frequency kya hogi so it will be p square for small a and small it will be q square and for capital a and small it will be 2p so it is given here it is basically the binomial extension of the expression p plus q whole square now here the different directions indicate the extent of evolutionary change the change of frequency of alleles in a population would then be interrupted as a as a resulting in evolution agar suppose abhi kya bola ki genetic equilibrium hai to har allele ki jo frequency wo stable hogi and unka sum bhi one hoga but agar isse disturb ho gaya allele frequency so this means there is there it results in evolution means that there, there will be formation of new species now there are five factors which govern the hardy weinberg principle are known to affect the hardy weinberg principle these are gene migration or gene flow genetic drift mutation genetic recombination natural selection genetic migration genetic drift mutation genetic recombination and natural selection <coughs> so abhi padhte hain ki genetic drift kya hota hai genetic drift when new genes or alleles are added to a new population and they are lost from the old population there would be a gene flow if this gene migration happens multiple times if some changes occur by chance it is called genetic drift to sabse pehle jab bhi koi ek population se dusri population mein genes transfer hoti hai ek population se gayab ho gaya aur dusri से डिक्रीज हो गई दूसरी पॉपुलेशन पे आ गई तो उसको क्या बोलेंगे जीन्स का फ्लो हुआ या फिर जीन्स की माइग्रेशन हुई और वो मल्टीपल टाइम्स हुआ बट इफ इफ इट अकर्स बाय चांस देन इट इज कॉल्ड जेनेटिक ड्रग समटाइम्स द चेंज इन एलियन फ्रीक्वेंसी इज सो डिफरेंट इन द न्यू सैंपल ऑफ पॉपुलेशन दैट दे बिकम अ डिफरेंट स्पीशीज वाई एलियन फ्रीक्वेंसी इतना डिफरेंट हो जाती है कि देयर इट फॉर्म्स अ डिफरेंट स्पीशीज the original different population becomes the founder and the effect is called the founder effect abhi original population se bani se drift hui to usko kya bolenge jo original population hai wo founder hai to usko kya bolenge founder effect abhi jo 
ਕਿ ਕੋਈ ਚੀਜ਼ ਨਹੀਂ ਆ ਕੇ ਜੋ ਐਕਸਪਲੇਨ ਕਰਨੀ ਹੈ ਦੈਟ ਇਸ ਜੈਨੇਟਿਕ ਜੈਨੇਟਿਕ ਡ੍ਰਿਫਟ ਇਨ ਇਨ ਡਿਟੇਲ ਸੋ ਜੇ ਜੈਨੇਟਿਕ ਡ੍ਰਿਫਟ ਹੈ ਇਟ ਇਸ ਆਲਸੋ ਕਾਲਡ ਐਸ ਦੀ ਸੀ ਵਾਲ ਰਾਈਟ ਇਫੈਕਟ ਦਿਸ ਹੈਜ਼ ਬੀਨ ਆਲਸੋ ਇਨ ਨੀਟ ਐਂਡ ਐਂਡ ਬਾਈ ਅ ਮੌਕ ਟੈਸਟ ਗਿਵਨ ਬਾਈ ਐਨ ਪੀ ਐਂਡ ਐਂਡ ਨੀਟ ਆਲਸੋ ਸੋ ਜੇ ਸੀ ਵਾਲ ਰਾਈਟ ਇਫੈਕਟ ਹੈ that if random change of gene or allelic sequence in a small population merely by chance the same definition yahan pe likhi hai ki random changes hai merely by chance aur abhi jo seval right effect it is of two types it is either the founder effect which is explained over here in the book and next is the bottleneck effect bottlenecks are the natural calamities like earthquake tsunami volcanic or flood फाउंडर इफेक्ट में क्या हुआ कि एक नई एलिन फ्रीक्वेंसी में इतना डारा डिफरेंस आ गया बाय चांस कि एक नई स्पीशीज डेवलप हो गई बट जो बॉटलनेक इफेक्ट है उसमें नेचुरल क्लैमिटीज की वजह से हुआ लाइक अर्थक्वेक्स एक्सेट्रा अर्थक्वेक प्लस नो द माइक्रोबियल एक्सपेरिमेंट शो दैट द प्री एग्जिस्टिंग एडवांटेज म्यूटेशंस व्हेन गेट सिलेक्टेड रिजल्ट इन ऑब्जर्वेशन ऑफ न्यू फीनोटाइप्स बट ओवर जनरेशंस this was result in speciation few generation ke baad speciation ho gayi that is formation of new species to so, abhi jo natural selection hai natural selection ki ya definition hogi natural selection is process in which heritable variations enabling better survival are enabled to reproduce and leave greater number of progeny the species which adapt better have a better survival are enabled to reproduce and leave a greater number of progeny now when we do a critical anal- analysis it makes us believe that the variation due to mutation or variation due to recombination or due to gene flow or genetic drift abhi ye sab variations kis liye aati hai ye sari ya to mutation ki wajah se aati hai ya recombination ki wajah se ya genetic flow ya genetic drift ye char terms ko acche se aata hai now these can be coupled to natural selection and natural selection can lead to stabilization and then there can be directional change or um, or there can be disruption so what are the three things natural selection can lead to it can lead to natural selection can lead to stabilization directional change or disruption and this is given here in the diagram see here individuals with the number of with the phenotype and this is the distribution the center one is the phenotype favored by natural selection and jo phenotype favored by natural selection hai usme medium sized individuals hain wo hamesha favor hote hain and they they have the maximum uh, progeny or the number of uh, organisms abhi kya hua ki kuch uh, disruption hai jab disruption aati hai to jo peaks hain wo do mein divide ho jati hai matlab jo av medium sized individuals the they will decrease where the extremes will increase so this is called disruption that there is a breakage or separation and not directional change the peak shifts pehle jo medium sized individuals which were favored they were here initially but now they are favored in the uh, and they have shifted that to a direction and the another type of organisms are favored and they have increased in population now stabilization stabilization is that the organism which were favored initially are now favored more and they have increased more in number the extremes have decreased way more and they have increased so these are the three responses that are given by natural selection and you need to learn this process properly now here comes the brief evolution of the brief account of the evolution as we discussed earlier around 2000 million years ago the first cellular form of life appeared on earth the mechanism of how non cellular molecule aggregate is could have been they have been involved into cells so some some of these cells had the ability to release o2 the reaction could have been similar to light reaction in photosynthesis where they split the solar energy where the water is split with the help of solar energy captured channelized by the appropriate light harvesting segments 
दोनों जो सिंगल सेल्ड ऑर्गेनिजम थे दे फॉर्म इंटू मल्टीपुलर लाइफ फॉर्म बाय द टाइम 500 मिलियन ईयर बैक इन वर्टिब्रेट्स वर फॉर्म जॉलेस फिशेस 350 मिलियन ईयर्स बैक सी वीज एंड फ्यू प्लांट्स 320 मिलियन ईयर्स बैक एंड देन वी हैव फिश विद स्पाउट एंड स्ट्रांग फिंस could move and go back into water this was around 350 million years back and in 1938 a fish was caught in south africa to silakent which was thought to be extinct but it is not extinct these animals are called lobe fins the first amphibian lived uh, the first amphibian that lived both on land and water no specimens of these are presently left to the earth the modern day frogs they have these ancestors these were ancestors of modern day frog and salamander again we can see that their modern day descendants the turtles and the tortoises of what they lay thick shelled eggs and do not dry up in the sun and these are amphibians now around next 200 million years ago also jo reptiles the they came into existence with different shapes and size and they dominated the earth this is all the data and the timeline you need to remember there is also no, nothing to understand now there were giant ferns that are the redophytes which came from coal deposits slowly then there was 200 million years back ichthyosaurus the land reptiles of course dinosaurs biggest of them was tyrannosaurus rex a 20 feet high and a huge dagger like around 5 65 million years back the dinosaurs suddenly disappeared now first mammals were like shrews this is also at the end of the now when reptiles came down mammals took over the earth when reptiles came down mammals took over the earth This is in South America mammals, resembling horse, hippocampus, and rabbit. Due to continental rift, when South America joined North America, these animals were overridden by the North American fauna. Due to same continental rift, most mammals of Australia survived because of lack of competition. Because Australia was के पास कोई कंपटीशन नहीं था इसी वजह से मार्सुपियल मैमल्स देव सरवाइव एंड देन देयर इज एवोल्यूशन ऑफ हॉर्स एलिफेंट्स डॉग एटसेट्रा हैव देयर ओन स्पेशल स्टोरी एक्चुअली मैंने इसको क्यों हाईलाइट किया बिकॉज़ दी सिली एंटिटीज आर मेड आउट ऑफ दीस सम लाइंस सो द मोस्ट नाउ दिस इज एन इंपोर्टेंट एंड द मोस्ट सक्सेसफुल स्टोरी इज द एवोल्यूशन ऑफ मैन विद लैंग्वेज स्किल्स इन कॉन्शियसनेस now out of this what you need to remember is just the data which i highlighted that is the years and with the organism which developed during that time and also do try to remember these diagrams as well as as you can because these sometimes are asked in the exam they just erase one or more name and they ask they are now the last and the most interesting part of the chapter is the evolution of humans now according to the evolution of humans it will be that it was around 15 million years ago primates called just primates called the uh, dryopithecus and dromopithecus came into existence now these were hairy walked like gorilla and chimpanzee but jo dromopithecus tha he was more like man and the dryopithecus was more like ape तो यहाँ पे भी तो डिस्टिंगशन मिल गई रामा पे थैसा से आगे जाके ह्यूमन डेवलप होंगे एंड रायो पे थैसा से आगे जाके एब्स डेवलप होंगे अब ये फ्यू फॉसल ऑफ मैन लाइक बोन्स वर डिस्कवर्ड इन यूथोपिया मैन लाइक बोन्स यूथोपिया में एंड तंजानिया में दीज रिवील्ड होमोनिड फीचर्स लीडिंग टू बिलीव दैट अराउंड थ्री टू फोर मिलियन ईयर्स बैक मैन लाइक प्लानिट वॉक इन ईस्टर्न अफ्रीका now the their features were they were not taller than 4 feet and around 2 million years back australopithecus probably lived in the east african grasslands the iske evidences kya the hunted with stone weapons 
and essentially eight tooth now these every each and every line here in these two paragraphs is very very important because they pick up any line and they'll just change one word hunted with stone weapons they'll say hunted with steel weapons or he'll just say essentially eight fruits here he'll say essentially eat meat so this is how they'll just change the sentences and make emphasis out of it so the first human like hominid was called homo habilis homo habilis the brain capacity the brain capacity were between 650 to 800 cc but they did not eat meat now the fossils were discovered in java discovered in java in 19 1891 revealed the next state that is homo erectus homo erectus around 1.5 million years back Homo erectus was a large. He had a large brain, around nine hundred cc centimeter square. Now, the Homo erectus was he probably ate meat. So, the first one that we found in Australopithecus was what they ate. They ate fruit, but slowly they they evolved and started eating meat. Eating meat. Now, they came to the Neanderthal. 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 Now, they came to He had a brain size of fourteen hundred cc. He lived in East and Central Asia between one lakh to forty years back, forty thousand years back. And this also, this is also the data you need to remember. Now they used to hide to protect their body, protect their body, and they also buried their dead. Now the Homo sapiens, they arose in Africa. And moved across the continent and developed into distinct races. Now, when came the Ice Age? Ice Age came between seven thousand to ten thousand years ago, when where modern Homo sapiens arose. Now, key historic key word was the eighteen thousand years ago. One such painting is by the prehistoric human can be seen on Bean Bait Car Rocks. The other is the Bean Bait Car Rocks. In the Assam district of Madhya Pradesh, and also I, my college is in Madhya Pradesh. I am from Main Bhopal, so this a reference. Now agriculture. When did we start agriculture? Agriculture was ten thousand years back, and when the human settlement started, and the rest developed. That is, civilization came. Civilizations were destroyed. A new civilization came, and slowly. As the modern humans developed, so this is a brief about the evolution chapter. Now, what you need to do for this last section, that is a brief account of evolution, you should write down the timelines. Like, for example, twenty billion years back, the Earth originated. Four point five billion years back, solar system and Earth originated. From here till sixty-five million years back, dinosaurs suddenly disappeared. This is the timeline which should be prepared from twenty billion years back to sixty-five million years back. And next comes the humans. For humans, it should also be prepared from apes. Ah, uh, ki kitne years pehle humans develop hue and kab tak kya kya kaise hua. And also, you need to learn about the ah uh, the brain size or the brain capacity of the various species of humans. So with this, the chapter is done. We'll just have an overview again. So from the start, this is the names of the few scientists which are not given in the book. You need to remember. Then comes the origin of life. Origin of life was explained from the theory from the Big Bang theory. It said oh, it was four point five million billion years back, and life originated from uh, inorganic mol from the molecules. And that was carbon vapor, uh, water vapor, methane, carbon dioxide, and ammonia. Now this is an important line. Oxygen will combine with ammonia and methane to form water, CO2, and methane. Now when did life appear? Life appeared around five thousand years back. And then there were a few theories given by early Greek thinkers, Louis Pasteur, uh, Operin, and Heldon, in Nestle Miller's experiments, which explained the theory of Operin and Heldon. 
now the first non cellular form of life was 300 or uh, 3 million billion years back and then that was rna protein and polysaccharide then came the first cellular form which was single cells and this is the version of biogenesis what is very essential for evolution now comes this theory of, of special creation it is discarded nowadays it has three connotations now then came charles darwin his ship mhs beagle he told about the theory of natural selection alfred wallace also gave a civil, uh, similar theory around his time then the evidences for evolution there are paleontological evol- evidence and embryological evidence it was given by one circle but now it is discarded uh and was disapproved by Carl Ernst von Baer. Then comes the homologous evolution, uh, the divergent evolution that is homology, and the convergent evolution that is analog. This is all. the word is uh, homology. Okay. And then the example of homology and analogy are here. This is analogy and this is homology. Now the uh, this is an important statement. Then goes the example of uh, evolution by anthropogenic actions which is the example of moths from england now this is an important statement again now then we learned about the adaptive radiation which is given by darwin and the best example is darwin finches other examples are written over here darwin finches australian marsupials and this third example so the australian marsupials their adaptive radiation and one more adaptive radiation going parallelly was the other central mammals so these together are called convergent evolution it can also be called as parallel evolution but convergent evolution is a better option then comes the biological evidence it was darwin said that the rate of appearance of new forms depend on the life cycle so here come the example of antimicrobial resistance See, if we put an antibody, only those bacteria will be able to survive which are resistant to that antibody. In a few hours, only a new species will develop a species which is resistant to the antibody. So, branching descent and natural selection are two key concepts of Darwinian theory of evolution. Then came Lamarck. He gave the theory of use and diseases of our organs, but it is no longer accepted. Now, when we talk about story of world, then evolution is a process. When we talk of story of life, evolution is a result. Then comes Thomas Malthus. He worked in population influence Darwin. Mechanism of evolution. Here came about the example of uh, the mention of the scientist Hugo D. Veres. He explained the idea of mutation through the example of evening primrose. For Darwin, evolution was a gradual process. For D. Veres, it was solitation, that is, single cell large mutation. Then comes the Harvey, we- Harvey Hardy Weinberg principle. They explain that the natural selection leads to three uh, things that is, stabilization, directional, and disruptive changes. What does the Hardy Weinberg principle say? The principle says that the allele frequencies in a population are stable and constant from generation to generation and this uh, the gene pool is also constant and some of the allele frequencies is one this is called a genetic equilibrium and if there is any shift from the genetic equilibrium or the frequency of the alleles then it is called as evolution and development of new uh, evolution of new species what does it say it's the same thing p square plus 2p square p 2p q and q square is equal to 1 now, the disruption of R.D. Weinberg equilibrium can be done by five elements. That is genetic migration, genetic flow, genetic drift, mutation, genetic recombination, natural selection. So these are the examples of natural selection. Uh, no, these are the, uh, this is the genetic drift. Genetic drift can be of two types, bounded effect or bottleneck effect. Now, the, again, the brief account of evolution. Here, we need to learn about the timelines. Make a timeline and do learn the timeline and try to memorize these diagrams as well. And at the last, it comes, at the last is humans. Here humans make a table where you learn about the names of the species of the human and then their brain cells. So this was all about the chapter. 
so once we'll go through the questions here antibiotic resistance has been explained in this chapter itself very well it is given on the page number page 134 then this is just a fun fact question you can um, search the internet and find the question answers to it attempts to give a clear definition of the term species so as you learned in class 11 the definition of species is a group of organisms that consist of similar individuals capable of interbreeding or exchanging genes among stem cells. Now try to trace the various components of human evolution. The answer to this question will be, these are the various aspects of human evolution, the size of brain, body posture, food preferences and features. So as we discussed in the chapter, there was Dryopithecus, Ramapithecus, Australian Pithecus, Australopithecus, Homo habilis, Homo erectus, Homo neanderthalans, and Homo sapiens fossils. Presently, we are Homo sapiens sapiens. So this is the size of the brain, and this is the body posture, food preferences, and features. You can refer to this table and the text given in the NTRT. Now, Australopithecus. Now let's do a bit changes here according to the NTRT. The size of the brain of australopithecus is 600, 600 cc of homo habilis it is 650 to 800 cc homo erectus it is 900 cc homo and it is 1400 cc for modern man, it is modern man, which is Homo sapiens, it is 14 cc. Try to learn the data in the NCRT which I have written here because that will be given in the option. And if the exact figure is not given in the option, then mark the range is given here. Now let's move on to the next question. Next, this we have done. Then this is again a self motive, like the question which you need to search on your yourself. But I'll give a hint over here. A few animals like dolphins, they have they are very intelligent, and others like even they say dogs and cats they have self conscious. So you can just search on this. Now ten modern day animals and their fossils. There's a list for that which I searched, horse and the name of fossil, man, jamapithecus, elephant, whale, fish, and giraffe. Rest you can also search. This is just a question for fun. And then track to drawing the uh, animals and plants. Describe one example of adaptive radiation. We have covered this in the text. It is given on page 132. Just refer to it. Can we call human evolution and adaptive radiation? Yes, we can. But still, I would like you guys to search for it. And then evolutionary stages of horse. These are the evolutionary stages of horse. It was first Eocene, then Oligocene, then Neocene, then Paleocene, then, then Pistocene. Yes, there were four figures. And this is the front leg and the back leg. Initially, they used to be four fingered and three fingered, but now they develop up to one finger. So this is all with the evolution chapter and the important point you need to focus. So hence, we are done for this chapter. Have happy learning and enjoy the chapter while learning it, so that you get very, you properly understand the chapter and have a good sense of it. And after that, practice previous year MCQs, which are very, very important for your learning. Thank you.